Great rising, Dr. Navi. Welcome back to Second Opinion with Dr. Ken Navi. How are you today? Dr. Navi, we'd like to cover today the connection between environment and mental illness. Can you expound more on that for us today? Right. We, we talked yesterday about mental illness being a root cause of violence in the urban community. And it's important to say, well, why, where's this all coming from? And the reason we went into that conversation is because the mental illness is induced by the environment that these people are being raised or reared in. And so in order to talk about it, we have to bring up broader topics. And the topic we're going to bring up today is epigenetics and with transgenerational epigenetics. That sounds like a big word. It sounds real sexy and a lot of buzz in social media today about epigenetics and transgenerational epigenetics. Some of it is true and accurate. Some of it is not. Some people are using the word and maybe they should do a little more studying before they do. So today, we want to take a moment to do some really basic, uh, really basic discussions regarding uh, the DNA, regarding gene, genes, genetic machinery as such. And I'm sure that, it, that I'm not going to talk over any of the lay people's heads in this issue. One of the first things we learn in our basic sciences and um, genetic, genetics classes in, um, in biology is that the sperm and the egg meet and they unite to form a primordial cell. One strand of DNA from each parent is donated to this primordial cell and it makes DNA which is the precursor for every cell in the body. Now what we get out of this primordial cell is hair, skin, bone, but we also get nervous tissue, we get cardiovascular tissue like heart, we get kidney, we also get, we get breast tissue. We get thyroid tissue. We get prostate. Okay. So basically, what we're looking at is specialized tissues versus unspecialized tissues. The reason I want to say this is because the new science out called epigenetics teaches us that what we originally thought is once this DNA fusion has occurred, and this differentiation into basic cells has occurred, that this process was fixed and that the function and expression of the DNA of these cells was, was, was stayed and was unchangeable, immutable. That's not true. What occurs when we go from this primordial cell to all of this differentiation into a normal human being, we found that there's a process to, to the gene or a part of the gene called the epigene. The epigene is um, nuke, it's, it's, it's genetic material that's attached to the gene. And this genetic material has the ability under certain environmental conditions to change the cellular expression of the cells that are affected. What does that mean? That a brain tissue or nervous system or neural tissue is no longer fixed and stagnant but can be changed by environment heart, kidney, breast, thyroid, prostate, and other glandular tissues, organ tissues, are not cha are, are, are changeable under these environmental conditions. Liken the epigene to the software of a computer. Liken the human body to the hardware. Okay, the, the, the software of the computer, which is part of the hard drive, can be, is, is programmed by the software programmer. The environment is the software programmer. So under a certain environment, the, so the, the, the software programmer, which is the environment, can cause the epigene to unwrap and send chemical signals down to the gene and cause the gene to change itself in expression. So what we get is environmental, is environment. causing changes to the epigene of the cells and leading the pathological conditions inside of the, of the human being. 
So yesterday we talked about mental illness, and we talked about as um, we talked about environmental conditions and the, the the trauma and the violence. But what people need to understand is the environment acting through the epigen, and this is obviously much more complex. And we're going to talk about it in the lectures that we're doing in July. But it's important that people understand that the mental illness, which is usually brought about by changes to the epigen in the brain, leads to the mental illness we're seeing in the community, the, the, func the formulation of uh, personality disorders. We got schizophrenia, you got all of the different major depression, anxiety disorders, people with chemical dependency problems. All of these are being epigenetically initiated by environment. And so the one thing that African Americans don't have control of is environment. So to wrap this up for today's lecture is simply to say ancestral trauma and epigenetics in the future is one of the most important pieces that we need to be talking about as a community. Because with the presidential election coming, it needs to be on the forefront of what we're putting in front of the candidates regarding what are you going to do to reverse the effects of ancestral trauma epigenetics in the future. Tomorrow we're going to talk about transgenerational epigenetics and we're going to talk about how environmental influences on the parent lead to, lead to epigenetic changes in the child and disease con condition potential in the offspring of those so affected. Thank you. My name's Ken Oppen.